Okay, uh, I'm ready to start. You can either say your name or not, but do say the name of the police department and then start to tell me what your complaint is. Okay. Okay, starting now. began on the 19th of April. Um, I was having trouble sleeping, so I went to my doctor to tell him, you know, that I thought to, to get to sleep, I was having to take too many pills. And um, This was an Indian doctor. He, he had a real heavy accent. It wasn't my regular doctor. My regular doctor wasn't there. And um, I'm kind of hard of hearing, so uh, we just, you know, I don't think we communicated. He mistakenly thought that I was trying to commit suicide, which is far from the facts. I've never been suicidal in my life, so it, it was just a miscommunication. But he called the police, I guess, and they, uh, he told me to go sit in the waiting room a few minutes, and I said, sure, and sat down. So a couple of police officers come into uh, the lobby where I was sitting, and um, I thought to myself, hmm, I wonder what they're here for. So anyway, the receptionist comes to the door and she tells me that uh, these two police officers are there for me and they, they start telling me, well, we're, we're going to help you. And I'm going, I don't need any help. And they said, you know, that I had to go with them. And I said, no, I don't want to go with you. There's no reason for me to go with you. I don't understand. So anyway, uh, they talked to me for a while and I said, I'm sorry, just, I just, can't go with you, you know, there's, there's no reason for me to, I'm not going. So they said, well, we're, you know, you'll either go this peacefully or else. And I go, okay. And uh, so I went down the hall and I sat down on this couch. I said, I'm still not going with you. You know, I said, let me call my daughter and um, tell her what's going on because she dropped me off here and she's supposed to pick me up. And I told her, I called her, I had a cell phone on me and I took it and I called her and I said, hey, they're trying to take me without my consent. And I said, these two police officers, I said, I don't know what to do. And she said, well, I'll hurry there, Mom. So, uh, but they didn't even wait for my daughter to, to come, you know, to the facility. And um, before I know it, they asked me to, you know, if I would stand up and talk to them. I said, okay. And then they, they were trying to put cuffs on me, handcuffs. And I wasn't under arrest, so I didn't understand what the heck they were doing. So I, I did resist. I was like swinging my elbows and said, stop that. Get your hands off of me. You don't have a right to do this. And um, they said they did, that there was some kind of order or something. I don't understand that either, that they, that they could take me with them. I'm going, I don't want to. Don't want to so anyway, uh, they, they and I struggled trying to let them get the cuffs off. And they got my, my uh, wrists are kind of swollen from, you know, them, from the struggle. And... Um, they got and kind of started walking down the hall. There were two of them, and then there was one guy. I'm not sure who he was. I think like an office manager or something. And um, he was walking along the side, and I started kicking. And I, you know, because I'm going, they're not taking me anywhere. What is going on? I've never been treated like this in my life. And I, I'm 64 years old. And I'm a granny, you know. And I'm going, what in the world? So I kicked that, and I don't know who. I, I think I kicked one of them. I'm not sure. And because uh, I didn't really feel the impact or anything. And uh, um, and also they were trying to take me to the store, and I put my foot up against that door trying to not let them take me outside. And uh, they were getting mad because I resisted. So they picked my arms up like chicken wings and held them up over my head. And I started to scream and cry and say, stop it, that's not necessary, stop, stop, stop it. And they didn't. They opened that door, and they drug me. The two of them drug me through the parking lot uh, and drug one of my, my left shoe off. And it uh, it bruised my second toe real bad. It uh, it hurt so bad I thought it was broken, and they but uh, it wasn't. It was just badly bruised from the base of the foot to the end of the toe. It was as black as it could be. And uh, <clears throat> anyway, so they took me out to the police car, and I wasn't struggling anymore. I think they're I think they were mad because I had struggled. So they took my head. One of them took my head and slammed it on the trunk of the police car. And I had a wound on my face. I had an accident. I fell and hurt my face. And it was on my left side. And they slapped me down on my left side. And I, you know, and I don't know why they're doing this because I'm not resisting at all. I just said, stop, stop. So anyway, they opened the police door and shoved me in. And I said, where's my shoe? And they said, um, they took my purse away from me, too, during that struggle. And um, 
um, there wasn't anything in it to harm them, you know, it's just regular women's stuff in my purse. And they put, they shoved me in the police car, and I could, I was having trouble getting in there for some, I think I was in shock, and I was like pulling my feet in. They said, they, said, they started yelling at me to pull my feet in, and I go, okay, 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 you know, and I stood up, or I sat up, and <clears throat> got to my feet in the door, and, uh, this took me over to uh, a psych ward, which I'd never seen in my life. I hope to never see again. And uh, they took me in there. They were like, I wasn't resisting. They were just there, but one on each side of me. Let me, and, let me, um, let me ask you a few questions. So okay. you went to visit uh, a doctor. Have you been to the doctor before? Or is this the first time? No, I've been to that doctor a bunch, but his associate was there. He was not there. Okay, and you've and never met... Never you never met so his never, associate before? No, never said that I saw it. Didn't know who he was, and, you know, and he, like I said, he and I did not communicate. Okay, let me let me continue. So okay. he, he had no real dealings with you before this date? No, not at all. I'd never seen the man, never laid eyes on him. Okay, and so at some point during his examination, he drew the conclusion that you were a mental health risk and needed to be confined? I guess so. He thought I was uh, suicidal. I'm going, God, I've never been my life. So your hold on, hold on. So your previous okay. doctor, your actual doctor, was not treating you for suicidal tendencies or anything like that. Never. Okay. So this doctor on his own came up with another diagnosis that didn't really apply to you. Yes, that's correct. All right. So he calls the Corpus Christi police. They arrive, mm -hmm. and they don't listen to what you're telling them. They take his word for it that you're suicidal. Right. I mean, I, t I took some pills, but that was like four or five days before I went to my doctor's. Okay. I was suicidal, and I've tried to take some more. You know, I don't know. It was ridiculous. Okay. Now, how old are you? You said you're 64 years old? Yes, I am. Okay. And have you ever been arrested for something like this before? Never in my life. Never had handcuffs on. Never, never, never. That's the worst oh. experience of my life. Okay. Now, uh, there's a critical area of this incident the, because the police, to some extent, are allowed to use force to overcome resistance, even if they're wrong, if they're operating in good faith. But there's a critical point in your story where you said you were not resisting any further and they slammed your head into the car. Is that true? I was not resisting when they took my my arms that were in cuffs and just pulled up. I'd stopped resisting and they pulled my, and I've got arthritis in my, my shoulders and they pulled up and, and that hurt, really hurt. I'm screaming, stop, stop. You know? were, they, were they pulling your arms up behind you while you were handcuffed? So you know, they were rotating your arms against their normal uh, yeah, extension. Yeah, they had them up high where they were like, it was killing me. And then there, there ended up, there were finger marks, you know, bruises on mm -hmm. my uh, arm, my right arm. Were these, were these, were these, uh, were these both uh, male police officers? Yes, they were. Okay. And there was no female officer on the scene? No. Okay. So ultimately they take you into custody and they bash your head into the car was, were there any more acts of violence against you from that well, point they threw, forward? They threw me in the car, in the back seat. And I mean, I wasn't resisting all the way from where they're pulling my arms up. to I know I shouldn't have resisted at all, but like I said, I never had any dealings with the police in my life. And I was just, you know, like, no, you don't. You know, leave me alone. And, uh, you know, they just wouldn't listen to me that I was trying to tell them, you know, this is all a mistake, blah, blah, blah. And uh, no, no response from them. Okay, what what were the officers what what were the officers' names if you remember? Uh Tim Smith and Louis Villa Villa Gomez. Okay. And had you ever met these officers before? Never. Okay. All right, I have enough information. I can tell you that you do have a, at least a few complaints. Um unprofessional conduct and excessive force are the first two that come to my mind, and I may have additional information after I get a chance to look at the police reports.